Begin the current doubt, Masech the Shabbos of Kuv Yadalim. We begin on the bottom line of Kuv Yadalim and Bez, where our share continues with the theme of the previous half, where we're discussing the laws of Kuv and Shabbos, specifically that of changing our clothing. She is co-sponsored by Kazuk and Echesko, Tarani, Tam Dav Chaim. Appreciate everyone who's joining us today. Some of the we're going to be speaking on today's daf are the clothing of a Tamachachim, keeping his clothing clean and respectable. I think all mothers should be listening to this shir today. Who has the status of a Tamachachim? It might depend on exactly what that is. Tisha Machlik is Tanoim, whether leftover fats from Shabbos Karbanas may be burned on Yom Kippur, as we discussed in the previous Mishnah. The terms of concepts known as the Gadim Shabish Ben Kedeir Larabai. The clothing that he, the person wears when he cooks the pot for his master, al yimzik ben kaisel rabbi. That shouldn't be the same clothing you're using to pour the cup for your master because those are dirty clothing. This is the concept of chatzitza. When something is immersed, its entire surface must come in contact with the water without any interposition. And then, if there's something else there, it's going to invalidate the tefillah. This is the concept of hashavas avedah. A unique halacha. Usually, you need to have a simon or edim that is yours. But by tamachacham. One can return it to him based on his claim of recognizing it, which to be as honest, ugh, the Kentus is man's. Oh, yeah, so give it back. That's a unique halacha of a Additionally, the concept of Kahnim's reason, which generally we presume that the Kahnim, that they have alacrity, they're careful, they're very uh, meticulous in the halachas. Additionally, the concept of Kanivis Yerik is going to come up at the end of the daf, which is peeling away bad leaves around the vegetable. On Shabbos, that's Asr, and Yom Kippurim, that's Mutter. We're going to talk about what happens if Shabbos falls out on Yom Kippurim. This is the concept of what's called Ein Deichen Shvus Lahater. So generally the Rabbanan will allow uh, Shvus to be violated if it's to be stringent. But they're not going to allow a violation of the Isser Rabbanan just to inform people that something is really Mutter. So they're not going to override a Shvus to create a permissibility. So we begin the card of the Gimel Mabez, bottom line of the Amid. We will continue, we were talking about that for the covet of Shabbos, that one should switch his clothing. On that, the Gemara continues and says, Amr Bach bar Abba, Amr Bechad, there's a continuing type of Kopidal Menal. Menayim, let you know, you begot the Menatar. Where do we know this concept of changing the clothing from the Torah? That it's a, a sign of respect in front of Hashem that you change your clothing and you upgrade your clothing from what you were wearing, let's say, Arab Shabbos to Shabbos. Where do we find that concept in the Torah? Says the Gemara, like says the Pazgim, he could say, as a Fashad, this begot of, that he should switch his clothing, but Lobos begot Machem. And he should wear other clothing, which is the Torah required. The person who was wearing more lower class clothing when he was taking out the ashes from the base of Migdash, which is not a distinguished Abayda, and he was doing it so that his regular distinguished clothing should not can get dirty, which is the Abayda, let's say, of the eating and the drinking. For example, when he's sacrificing things on the Mizbeach or pouring the libations. So it says that when he's taking out, taking out the Deshin, which is the, the ashes, he should wear Begod He should wear other clothing. So, Betanad Be'er Bishmol was told in the Bible of Be'er Bishmol to expound this Pasik. So, the Torah is teaching you an appropriate conduct, which is, the, the clothing that the person wears when he's cooking the pot for his master, which is similar to taking out the ashes, meaning it's a, take out the garbage, so to speak. That's shown that the, the, that's not the garbage. But the, that type of concept, which you, you're cooking the pot, you're getting all dirty, you're getting all, all schmitzig. You should not use those same clothing to pour the cup of the master. And therefore the Pasuk requires that you wear lower grade clothing when you're taking out the ashes. So when you come, you come all dressed nicely in your white things. You come with, for the master with this nice glove and you come. It's not the same clothing you wear when you're taking out the ashes. And that's how we, we see this concept of Shina Begad. Now related, the Gemara brings the Amr Abchei Bar Abba Amr Abiyach, and it says, G'nai lo tamachachem, it's disgraceful for a Talmudic scholar, she'yitzi b'na olam ha'metulam l'shok, shouldn't wear patched shoes when he's going out to the marketplace. Again, we see the obligation of wearing respectful clothing. It says the Gemara, but Rabba Acha Bar Hanin in Nafik, he went out to the street with patched shoes, and he obviously kept the halacha. It says the Gemara, no, Amr Rabba Acha Bar Eid Rab Nachman b'tloi ga b'tloi. What did we say that's inappropriate, that's disgraceful? If you wear shoes that are patched, on top of patches. That's already showing, like my grandfather said, Melat Tatuni says, Teloi al Gabi Teloi. It's like that's already what they had in, in Mamarosh. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, not, that's not respectful to be walking down the street. Patch on top of patches, that's a Tamachacham, should not do that. Another teaching from Omar Abchia Bar Abba Amar Biechnon, he says, Kal Tamachacham Shinim to Revab al Bigda, any Tamachic scholar that has uh, fats or, or, or grease on his clothing, he's liable for the death penalty. 
because he has to be respectable and appropriate and have a good appearance for the honor of his Tyra. Shunema, it's actually based on the Pasig in Mishli. The Pasig says, Komesane, Hashem says, all who hate me, Abu Mavis, they love death. Now, says the Gemara, Atiku Mesane, don't say those who hate me, Elamasniai, those who cause others to hate me, which they make themselves look repulsive in the eyes of others. And people say, huh, for who, the last thing I want to have is a, a son who learns Tyra. Look at them. Look how disgraceful. Look how. So he's going to cause people to hate the Tyra. That's all but mothers. No, you have to be respectful. You have to be respectable. You have to be. Uh, you shouldn't be having that, that nice big ketchup stain on your shirt. And people said, no, that, that's what it is. That's, so therefore, he's Chayiv Mesa. Now, Ravina Ami says it wasn't Revava Big Day, meaning Greece. Rather, it means Revad Idmar. Revad means Sheikh Vazera. He shouldn't have any semen on his clothing. And the Gemara actually says, well, they're not disagreeing. Haba Glima. One of them was talking about the outer clothing. That's even grease. Hablavusha, we're talking about when the lower garment that people don't see, that's problematic. You shouldn't have Sheikh Vazera, but that's not a problem by having grease because no one really sees that anyway. And again, that's the, the certain stat, standard that a Tamil Chacham should have regarding the appropriateness of his garments. Now, related, the Gemara brings another teaching from just because it's related to this concept. What does it mean the Pasuk in Yeshayam? Kashaholach Avdi Yeshayahu, just like my, my servant Yeshayahu, he went, Arum Biyachiv, naked and barefoot. So the Gemara understands he didn't go naked and he's not going barefoot. Rather, what does it mean? Arum means to say, Bibgod and Beluim. When it says he was going undressed, meant to say it was worn out clothing. And Biyachiv, what does it mean? Barefoot means Bimina Olam Amtulam, means pad shoes. Again, that's not appropriate. So therefore, it's almost considered as if he went without clothing and without shoes. Now, related to this halacha, the Gemara brings. It's going to come back to the halacha that we mentioned. Snan Hasam. We learned over there in the Mishnah Masech this Megvais. And again, the reason why we're bringing this is because one of the teachings is going to mention Shel Banoim, the clothing of Banoim, which one of the interpretations is that Banoim is a Tamachachim, and therefore because Tamachachim is very particular about how he should look, so that's why it's going to have a unique halacha regarding laws of Chatzitza, because Chatzitza is dependent on what you're mocked about. If it bothers you, it's Chatzitza. If it doesn't bother you, it's not a Chatzitza. So that's why I'm bringing in this teaching, because we just mentioned Tavu Chacham has to be very respectful, he has to look good, not, it's not Shtari uh, Azim but not, not Shlepidik, he has to be, he has to be respect, respectable. So that's why we're going to bring in this halacha that's going to relate to that halacha. So we learned within the Mishnah Masechus and Mishnah, this is Revav, if this Greece, Al Hamardeya, on the saddle cloth of a donkey. So there's something else over here, a different substance. So Chaitzitz, says the Tanakhama, so it's going to be interposition. So if you want a table in the mikvah, this Mardaya, let's say it became Tameh, it's not going to work. Because since it bothered you that there's a grease stain, so that's a chatzitza. So therefore, it's not going to be a valid tefillah. Shem Lilo, he says, Ad ki iser It says, it's not just any grease stain. If there's a grease stain the size of an Italian iser, which is a type of a coin, that's already a big stain. That's going to bother you already. That's going to be chatzitza from tabling the mikvah. Okay, that's regarding the Mardaya, the saddle cloth. Continues the Mishnah. Let's say you have a grease stain on the clothing. So we have a three-way machlik is regarding what's considered chatzitza of a stain on the garment. So the Tali Kama says, Mitzad echad, if the stain's only on one side, in the chatzitz, that's not considered into position. The person, okay, well, let's do a fleck. You know what I'm saying? It's not, doesn't bother him. Mishnah's done. But if the stain's on both sides, like Rashi explains, meaning it absorbed so much of the stain that it went through and through from the garment and now you can see it on the other side, Okay, that's already bothers people. That's a real stain. That's chaitz. It's not going to be in position. That's not going to be valid. You have to first clean that out, and then tell everyone else it's not going to be valid to be. That's the Tanakh. Rabbi Yehuda, I'm a Mishum Rabbi Shmuel. He says the name Rabbi Shmuel. No, Ach Mitzad Echad Chaitz. No, a garment bothers a person even on the one side of the stain. It's a it's a kapeda. It's going to be chatzitz. We'll so, we'll shortly see a third opinion also in the name of Rabbi Shmuel. But before we do, the Gemara asks the following question. He says, Mardaz, regarding the saddle cloth, Mitzat Echad, is that a kapeda, is that a chatzitza on one side of the saddle cloth? Again, the saddle cloth is that cloth you wear, you put on the donkey when you're riding on the donkey, you're on this cloth. It's, is that, that going to be chatzitza on one side? Or you to them on both sides? Like Rashi explains, the most question is going to be small. He said regarding a garment, a regular clothing, that from one side it's going to be chatzitza. So the question is, what's going to be the halacha? regarding a mardas. So on that Amalei, he said to him, look, Zulu I didn't hear exactly what's the halacha regarding this stain of the mardas, that a chatzitza, if that's only 
on both sides, or even on one side, but Kayitzabashamati, but something similar I heard that from there we could infer what the Allah would be, because there's none. This is the third opinion. That same Mishnah that we just quoted before, we only before quoted two opinions, it's actually a third opinion. Rabbi Yisami, he says, Shal Banoin, and this is the whole reason why we're bringing this in, as classic Tamaric style, is because we're going to relate back to what we said before. Shal Banoin, we're going to shortly explain what the Banoin is, but this opinion of Rabbi Yisami is coming to disagree with Rabbi Huda. Again, if you, if you even want to look over here on the chart, we quoted so far two opinions. We had the Tanakama, who said, when you have a stain on the garment, said, if it's visible on both sides, of the garment, only then there's going to be chatzit. So Rabbi Huda says, no, even when it's visible on one side. But Rabbi Huda is going, he was saying according to Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Yisri is coming to disagree on Rabbi Huda in the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel. And he says, no, Rabbi Shmuel holds, it depends whose garment it is. If it's that of the Banoin, who they are the Tamid Chacham, according to one interpretation as we're going to see, who they're very particular about the clothing, again, the Chayiv Misaf, they're not dressed nicely. So if it's Banoin, so Mitzad Echad. So it depends. Tamachacham, his clothing, He's going to be bothered if even on one side there's a stain. Stain because he can't wear it then. Vishambur, but an ignoramus, by him it's Mishnah Stodden. It's only Chatzitz if it's on both sides. Because eh, the stain, who cares, whatever, doesn't bother him. Both sides, okay, that's a real fat stain over there. Then it's going to, then it's going to be Chatzitz. So again, that's, that's a third opinion. Where the first opinion says only both sides. The second opinion said on one side. And one said, the third opinion of he said it depends who. But knowing one side and of Bur of uh, both sides. But that's what he was telling him. He says, wait a second. Based on this interpretation of Rabbi Yisi, a saddle cloth can't be any better than the clothing of an ignoramus, as much as the ignoramus is not like a tamachachim, he's still a mensch. And a saddle cloth is not going to be more severe of a part of hakpada, particularity, than the clothing of, a, of even the lowest class person. So therefore, obviously, the stain of the chatzitza on the saddle cloth is not going to be if it's on one side. It's got to be on both sides. So therefore, that's how he answered him the question. And that the Gemara says, okay, my Banoin, you said that Banoin, according to Rabbi Yaisi, by them it's Chatzitz on one side, and for the boar of two sides, who, who are these Banoin that are so particular about their clothing? So it's actually two different interpretations. The first one was the reason why we brought this in, Amr Rabbi Yechim, and he says, El Tamid HaChachamim, these are Tamidic scholars, why are they called Banoin? Shalaitzkin, Bibinyan, Shalom, Kal Yimein, all their life, they're busy with the building of the world. Tamid HaChacham have to understand that they're holding up the whole world, and therefore they're called Banoin. And therefore, by them, it's going to be chatzitz on one side, because like we said, by them having a stain on their clothing, the chayv misa, so it can bothers them a lot if they have a stain on their clothing, therefore, it's a chatzitz. Now, well, once we introduce Rabbi Yechon, I'm talking about Tamed HaChachamim, now the Gemara goes into an interesting discussion about Ezeu Tamed HaChachamim, what's considered Tamed scholar, but for many different areas, it depends in the context what we're going to qualify as a Tamed HaChachamim. So who is a Tamed HaChachamim? Shemechazirin le'aveda b'tfiyas ayin that we return him his lost object just by his eye recognition. He says, I recognize what it is, even if he doesn't give a simon, doesn't give a sign, as the Gemara says in El Ritzias, we usually have to give a simon, okay? Tell me the sign, he says, oh, it has a scratch, you know, oh, okay, fine. The Muhammad says, I recognize this is mine, you have to give it back to him. Who's considered Tamachachem to say that you're going to do this halach of him with Tviyazayin? He says, the Gemara is, Zeha makbed al chaluk if he's particular on his shirt, on his clothing, to turn it inside out, meaning let's say he puts it on uh, inside out. So he's particular about it, and he's going to take off the shirt, he's going to take off the jacket, and so that it shouldn't see the degrading the, the stitches and the seams of the garment. That's considered tamachacham, that when he says that this is his object, you're going to return it to him. Also, Ba'am Rabbi Yechonon, he says, He's a tamachacham, Shemman no Isi Pran Salat Sibur. Who's considered tamachacham, scholar, that you point him as a leader over the public? You could ask him halacha in any place in all of Shas. The man will tell you the answer. Even the Masech Kala, who the way Rashi explains it is, even though that people don't usually learn Masech Kala, but he put his thoughts to it to learn it, which Masech Kala is brought there in the back of the Masech It's really a brisa. The It's called Masech Kala because the opening halacha says that a kala without a bracha is forbidden to her husband like a nida. She has to have the birchas erisin and yusuin, so he learns even that. So that's considered tamachacham that you could appoint him as a leader over the public. Another teaching from Rabbi Yechon says, "Is it tamachacham? What's considered tamachacham scholar? Shemene ira mitzum and lasla malachta that his his inhabitants of his city have, they, that they're commanded to do his work." As the Gemara says in the seventh parak of the Yuma, when Moshe Rabbeinu was told by Hashem to make the aron, so one pasuk says, "V'asisu lacha aronates, you should make it." Another passage says, "Va'asu are in and that they, the Jewish people, should make it. So the Gemara says, yes, he, they have to do his work 
the Tamachachim, the people of the city, have to do his work. Who's considered the Tamachachim that the people of the city have to do his work? Zeshemene Chavtsay, it's someone that leaves his own desires, and he does heaven's desires, meaning, he has work to do, but he gives it up because he's doing it for the tzibur. That's the type of person that we have to go ahead and support that type of person like Meish Now says the Gemara, but Fahanimil, this was only said, to go through the effort of providing him for bread, meaning to say something that he, he can't work on because he's so busy with the tzibur, but his life depends on it. But other things, extras, that we're not obligated to support him for. Another teaching, Fahanimil, he says, What's considered a Talmudic scholar? Here it doesn't say the context. It just says, who's a Talmud Chacham? It's called Shashayel, and I say it's anyone that you ask him, Halacha B'chalmokim, I mean, you ask him Halacha anywhere, and he says it. But the Gemara says, wait, Lamayin Avkimina, for what purposes are you talking about over here? So the Gemara, Lamayin Avkimina, for what purposes are you talking about here? as a leader over the Tzibur. As the Gemara explains, it actually depends. Ibachadim Mesechta, if he knows how to respond regarding Mesechta that he's involved in, that Mesechta that we learned in the Yeshiva, then you appoint him Ba'asri, as the leader over his his, his city where he lives. If he, he, he learning, he's learning one Masechta, but he can answer a question in another Masechta, then Baresh Masechta, then we make him the Rosh Yeshiva, we make him in charge of the whole Yeshiva, he's obviously more competent of a Tamachacham. Now again, like we said, this Machlik is regarding what's the Banayin, so we had brought in this whole discussion because we said a Tamachacham is Machbed al-Chaluk, he's Machbed al shouldn't have stain, it was Chayv Misa, and that was the first interpretation of who the Banayin are, that it's going to be considered according to one opinion, Chatzitza, that was the opinion of Rabbi Yesi, that we said that he holds Banayin are even if it's on one side, because they're particular, that was like the interpretation of Rabbi Yechid, and it says, Tamid HaChachamim, or Eskim B'Binyan Neshalalim, they're the ones who are Makhbed, they're called the Banayin. Now the Gemara actually brings a second interpretation, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakashama, he says, this that we learned in the Mishnah, that the Banayin, according to Rabbi Yesi, they're considered Chatzitza, staying even on one side, not on both sides, Elu Kilim Hul Yarin. This is the, the clothing, the of the bathhouse attendants, which they would have these uh, distinguished uh, towels or robes that the people would, uh, the more nobility would, would put on when they come out of the bathhouse. And that were very particular, it shouldn't have any stain. This was a high class, this is a presidential VIP, people are coming out, they want to see that the, no one ever wore this before, this is perfect, you see a stain, come into a hotel room, you see a stain on the, on the bedspread. <laughs> you know, maybe in your own house you would wear, but this is, a, uh, excuse me sir, this is, please give me another room. So we're talking about the, these are the clothing of the bathhouse attendants. Habomim din sayam, it's from overseas. This is, this is brought from who knows, from China, or India, whatever. And the, why are called banoim? So Rashi says, because as we have a Gabon Daflama Gimel, Beibani is the word of a bathhouse. Beibani. So they have a banoim, is the bathhouse attendants. We're talking about those clothing from them. That's where they're very particular, that even one side. Is going to be considered as a fleck, as a stain, to be considered a chatzitza. But the Gemara asks him this: Remember the chibrin in it? Is that really to say that the 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 robes of the bathhouse for the distinguished people are white? Because from the fact that you tell me that they they bothered about a little stain, obviously it's white. Because it would be red, it wouldn't be so disgraceful with a little stain. Because it's red, it, it gets that's why people have colored clothing that you can't see the stains. So are you telling me that it's white? But Va'amalu Rabbiyani, Labana Rabbiyani said to his sons like this, he says, Bana, my sons, Atik Biruni, he's giving his last will and testimony, he says, don't bury me, Loi became Levanim, not with white clothing, Loi became Shechem, not with dark clothing. And he says, why? Levanim, if you bury me with white clothing, Shem Eloi Esken, maybe I'm not going to merit, meaning I'm going to be amongst those who their judgment is for Gehenim, which is, looks like the bottom of the pot, Ve'ei Kachasim Ben Avelim, I'd be like a groom amongst the mourners. Everyone there is Schwarz, I'm wearing white, it's, it's just gonna look pretty bad. That, that what am I doing over here? Right? It's that one white guy in like yeah, in jail, right? It's it's not, you know, so it's 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 not gonna be good for him. So he says, Shrema, don't get me with black clothing, because Shema Eska, maybe I'm going to merit the Ayy Kabul bin Khazan. He says, I'm gonna be like the one guy throw the by a chasna. You know, he says, What are you doing over here? Everyone's afraid of him, you're the one guy wearing Schwarz. So it, it, black, so he says, I don't dress me as black either. He says, I'll tell you what type. Get me something in the middle, which are the, the robes of the bath as attendants that come from overseas. Says Obviously they're red or some other color, but it's not, it's not white, because that's what he says, don't dress me in white. Rather these garments. So you see they're not white. Says the Gemara, it's not difficult, because there's different types of clothing that they gave by this bathhouse. And this is a whole suite. This is a whole, they gave a whole production at this spa over here. Ha, Rabbi who was talking about burial, 
which is obviously not white. That's Beglimi. That's by the overcoat they would give there in the bathhouse. That was red. Ha, this over Shimon Melakish was told by that it's white, is, but was, was Belavushi. That was by the garment that they wore. So the garment that they wore that was white, the coat that they wore was red, and as Tyson is bringing, there were some other things they had, which were even other colors, but it's not a contradiction, it depends what, what it was. The inner garments were white, people would not want to stain even on one side that they wore, let's say in the bathhouse, besides the big robe they had on, give them a special shirt to wear, and you know, with a nice emblem, and now you put it on, it was like, that, 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 that was white, and that's very particular, even about a small little stain, that's gonna be chatzitza even on one side, that's banoim, according to the interpretation of Rish Lakish, and the one that was red, that was the outer robe, you're right, that wouldn't be chatzitza, even on one side. Now we go back to the Allah of the Mishnah, now we had a machlekes. First, the commissioner said, Rabbi Shmuel, he says, Mekaplin, that was just talking about, about folding the clothing, the chulu, but the main thing is on the etc. which read a machlekes, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Kiva, regarding, if you're allowed to sacrifice the sacrificial parts, meaning Rabbi Shmuel held that the chelve Shabbos, if you have, let's say Yom Kippur falls out on Sunday. So the fats, of the, the carbon of Shabbos, usually the way it would work, you would bring a carbon, let's say, Bein Arbaim. The, the tumid would be brought in the afternoon, and then this, the fats were sacrificed the whole night long. Now, here the night is Yom Kippur. So, Rabbi Shmuel held you allowed to sacrifice the fats of Shabbos on Yom Kippur. But, if let's say Yom Kippur is on Friday and, and then Friday night is Matzah Yom Kippur, so then you can't sacrifice the Yom Kippur fats on Shabbos because Shabbos, you can't do Malacha. You can only do the carbon of Shabbos, Shabbos Tamid, the, the, the Musaf. You can't do that of Yom Kippur. And Rabbi Kiva held that actually both you can't do. Said so you can't sacrifice the fats of Shabbos on Yom Kippur, and you can't sacrifice the fats of Yom Kippur on Shabbos. So now the Gemara goes and brings the source for this machlekes of our Mishnah. Turn around in the Brisa. Pasuk says in the Midbar, Oila Shabbos b'Shabbatay. The Oila, the, the totally burnt uh, carbon of Shabbos that you bring, which is the carbon tamid, is b'Shabbatay, is on its Shabbos. Now, without the vav, forget about the vav for a second, which is an exclusionary terminology, its Shabbos. But the fact that it goes and repeats the word two times, Oila Shabbos b'Shabbos, it could have just said Oila Shabbatay. Eilat Shabbos b'Shabbos comes to tell us that there's another Shabbos. There's many different things that are called Shabbos that you could also sacrifice the Eilat of the Shabbos. What's that coming to teach us? Says the Brice the Limit al Chelvei Shabbos. This comes to teach us regarding the the fats of the carbon of Shabbos. Let's say the, the limbs of the, the evening right before it gets dark. You bring the Tamid Shalbein Rabayim. That Shekraven that they could be sacrificed on Matzah Shabbos, which is Yom Kippur, which is on Yom Kippur which is also called Shabbos. Yom Kippur is also called Shabbos. It's telling us that you could sacrifice the fats of Shabbos on Yom Kippur. Now, says the Brice, Yochel Avshal Yom Kippur and Shabbos. You would think that the same thing works the reverse too, that you could bring the fats of Yom Kippur on Friday night, which is, let's say Yom Kippur is on Friday, you could bring it on Shabbos. The word B'Shabbatoi, there's a vav, in it Shabbos, that's an exclusionary miut terminology, which says it Shabbos and not a different Shabbos, Therefore, to tell you that, no, you could only bring it on Shabbos, and, but you cannot bring Yom Kippur's on Shabbos. That's the Rabbi Shmuel. Like we learned in the Mishnah, Rabbi Shmuel holds that you could bring the Shabbos in Yom Kippur, but you cannot bring the Yom Kippur on Shabbos. Rabbi Kippur, he says, no, Oila Shabbos b'Shabbate, what is the redundancy of saying Shabbos two times that you could bring it on a different day? Limit al chavi Shabbos comes to teach regarding the fats of Shabbos, Shekraven be Yom that you could bring it on Yom Tiv. Let's say Yom Tiv falls out to be on Matzah Shabbos. Yom Tiv is also called Shabbos that you could bring the fats of Shabbos on Yom Tov. Now, Yochel Afi Abbi Yom Kippur, you think you could also bring the fats of Shabbos on Yom Kippur. Tamalim Abbi Shabbat you know, it comes to teach, in it Shabbos, which is only on Shabbos, not on Yom Kippur. So it's the same machlekes that we had in the Mishnah, it's just how do you interpret Oile Shabbos Abbi Shabbat What are you coming to include from Shabbos, the second time it says Shabbos? According to Abbi Shemol, it comes to include Yom Kippur. According to Abbi Kippur, it comes to include Yom Tov, but not Yom Kippur. Yom Tov is lesser, you could do more malachas on Yom Tov than, than, than Yom Kippur. Until everybody knows your body? Yeah. So, and that's like what the Gemara is about to point out now. Question is, what are we including and what are we excluding from B'Shabbat Now, it says the Gemara, oh, it says just the, this last opinion continues, Yochalap Yom Kippur, right? We said, Tamalam B'Shabbat you would think, Osim Kippur, we say, no, B'Shabbat is excluding Yom Kippur. It says the Gemara, Keshatem Zulema, now when you, when you could, you could say, you could explain the Machlik is like this, that Ladib Bishmal, or Kornjur Bishmal, Nedarm and Nedavis. What's Nadam and Davis? Those are a carbon that you don't have to bring. You made a vow or you're donating, which the Machlik Masech the Bay on the Testament Aleph, if you're allowed to bring the Nyam to Benat, obviously it comes out like this. Rabbi Shmuel, he holds like the one who says, Kreiv Miyamtiv, that they could be sacrificed in Yamtiv. Oh, if Nadam and Davis 
but you could wait. You could slaughter it on any day that you want to. Still, you tell me you could slaughter them and sacrifice them on Yom Tov. So obviously, the fats of Shabbos, which was slaughtered in their normal time on Shabbos and the leftover, obviously, that you're allowed to go ahead and sacrifice them on Yom Tov. So therefore, the Chiyitzah Kra, then it must be that if you need the Pasuk of Eilu Shabbos B'Shabbat the extra Shabbos is coming to teach you not regarding Yom Tov, he can't hold his ground. Of course you could bring the Yom Tov. You can bring the German the Dabbas on Yom Tov. For sure you could bring the leftovers of the Shabbos coming which you had to bring. Must be he's coming to tell us the Yom Kippurim to say that you're allowed to go ahead and sacrifice the the, 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 the Chelvi of the Shabbos on Yom Kippurim. That's according to Rabbi Shmuel. Now, the Rebbe Kiva, the he holds in the Dharma, the Dove is ain't craving Yom Tov. You cannot sacrifice a regular nether in the Dove on Yom Tov. Oh, so there we have a So when we need the Pasi to tell you that this, the fats of Shabbos you can bring on another day, is Lemisha be Yom Tov. So it permits you a Yom Tov. So you don't have an extra Pasi to tell you that you do it on Yom Kippur. That's the foundation of the Machlekes in, yes, they had a Machlekes in We explained this based on the Pasi, Oyel Shabbos B'Shabbat. But why do they interpret Oyel Shabbos B'Shabbat, they one permitting Yom Tov, one permitting even Yom Kippur? Because if you hold that you could bring the Dharma the Davis on Yom Tov, so then you don't need it to tell you could bring the Chel Shabbos. Of course you could. Then, then must be it's coming to include something even more severe than Yom Kippur. But if you hold you can't bring the Dharma and Davis on Yom Tov, so then you wouldn't know necessarily that you could bring even the Chel Shabbos on Yom Tov. So it's coming to include that of Yom Tov, but not necessarily that of Yom Kippur. That's being excluded from the Vav of the Shabbat day. Now, related to this, the Gemara brings Amrav Zera, as you've seen the days. He says, Kavina the Babel, and I used to learn Tyre and Babel before I went up to Eretz Yisrael. How the Amri and Babel, they said like this. Had Tanya, this is in the Brice, Yom Kippur Mishchalis Arab Shabbos. So let's say Yom Kippur is on Friday, on Arab Shabbos. So Loha Yutaikin, they wouldn't blow, what are, they, what are we talking about blowing? In, Tam- in, in the, in the Mishnah times, they had the uh, six Tekiyas, they would blow on Arab Shabbos to stop the people from doing work on Arab Shabbos. Now, since Yom Kippur is anyways just like Shabbos, we're not doing any Malacha on Yom Kippur just like Shabbos, and you've been to do Malacha, so they didn't have to blow the shaifer on Arab Shabbos, tell you everyone stop doing Malacha, because no one's doing Malacha anyway. And so to be Matzah Shabbos. Let's say Yom Kippur falls out on Matzah Shabbos. Well, here I'm dealing. They wouldn't do Havdalah in Davening, and because you wouldn't say Hamavdul ben Kaidish le Kaidish, like we make on Yom Tiv that falls out of Matzah Shabbos, because what do you make Havdalah for? By Yom Tiv, you're downgrading. You could do Malacha. So if you make Havdalah, separation from the holy to the, to the mundane. But here in Kippur is the same thing as Shabbos. So they wouldn't do the Tekis on Arab Shabbos if it fell out on Friday. They wouldn't do Abdullah on Matzah Shabbos if it fell out on Sunday. Right, so that's what Taisus mentions. He says that uh, this is only going according to the Achim. The hold is always four days between every year, and they, they hold it's always, this, we don't, they don't have Loya Dubrej. Right, it doesn't happen. But Taisus says it's going according to that Mandam and that Tana that holds that. It could be any day, because it just goes every four days. Every year is just four days later than it was the previous year. Uh, so, so on that, says, says, says Reb Zeri, says, when I was in Bubble, when we learned this Brysa, in Bubble they said, Kali, that this Brysa is going like everyone. That we didn't entertain to say that this would be dependent on the Machlegis to be Shemon to be Kiva in our Mishnah. But, that's what we thought in Bubble. But, when I came up to the Yisrael, I found this I found this Amoira, the Yosef would come and he was sitting, he was saying like this. He says, This bride says Rebbe Kiva, he, it's going like Rebbe Kiva. That he considers Yom Kippurim like Shabbos. So therefore, you're not going to blow to make a Abdullah, to separate, to make a recognition between Shabbos and Yom Kippurim because you only blow the Shaifer from, let's say, a month, a weekday or a lower day like, like Yom Tiv into a more severe day. And, 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 and therefore, uh, here where the, the whole purpose is to, to blow, to make a separation, so it says that Yom Kippur, you're not going to blow to make a separation between the Yom Kippur and Shabbos because he holds that just like by Shabbos, you don't blow to, to, to separate the Kahanim from sacrificing the Chelbe Shabbos Yom Kippur because Yom Kippur, also you're not going to blow to make Havdalah because what does Rabbi Kiva hold? Kiva holds regarding that Yom Kippur and Shabbos are the same thing. So we're not going to blow. They're not going to make Havdalah because you can't bring the Chelbe Shabbos in your, uh, on Yom Kippur and you can't bring the Chelbe Yom Kippur on Shabbos. So it's the same thing. So, so there's no point in making Abdullah or making the Tzikiyas. Now, but that they said, do you Bishmal, because if you were entertained to say that it's going like a Bishmal, but even since he considers Yom Kippur less than Shabbos, because Dom he says, and we just went through this mach like this, Shabbos, Yom Kippurim, you could bring the fat of Shabbos and Yom Kippurim, so then the halacha shouldn't be correct. Litka, and this is a little bit of a, of a calculation, they should blow the shaifer, to stop the people from sacrificing the fast of Yom Kippurim on Shabbos. 
Now, with that blowing, they'll understand that Yom Kippur is lesser than Shabbos. Kihechi, so that when Yom Kippur falls out, let's say on Matzah Shabbos, on Sunday, and they're not going to blow, Lava Yadi, that people should know, the Chelbe Shabbos Karebim, Yom Kippur, that the fats of Shabbos are brought on Yom Kippur. Which my first time I asked, why do you have to say that? Why don't you just explain the case of Friday? But be that as a major, there's a difference between Shabbos and Yom Kippur. According to Yom Kippur, there's no difference. It's all the same thing. So there's no point of blowing the shayf or making Abdullah. There's no, you don't have to separate. It's the same thing. You're going, it's almost like a two-day uh, Yom Tev. It's the same thing. But according to Yom Kippur, there's a difference. Obviously, the Bryce is not like him because then it would make sense to A, make the Abdullah, and also even on the Arab Yom to, to make the Tkiyas, I mean on Arab Shabbos, because so that now you know that you can't do it now, and you'll also know that when the falls are on Sunday, that, that you could. That he says, no, but meanwhile, no, I said to them, it's not a raya, not a proof. This price, it could even be going like a bishmol. Because kahanim is reasoning. Kahanim are very meticulous, they have a lot of alacrity, they're proficient in halacha, and they don't need a sign. As the Pasik says in the Bible, Manah Gimel, Yoy Mishpatech Liyakov, the kahanim, they teach the Jewish law to the Jewish people. And therefore, even Rabbi, even Rabbi Shmuel would agree that you don't have to make the tkiyas. Because even though Yom Kippur is lesser, according to Rabbi Shmuel, but, what, but who are you blowing for? You're only talking about the Abayit in the base of Middash, the Chavish Shabbos, if they're craving Yom Kippur, that, they kind of know that. You don't have to do a, a tekiah. You don't have to do Abdel. You don't have to do this for the Kahnam. Regular people need a separation. People working out in the field, you've got to blow the shayf from, oh my, Shabbos, whatever, they have no clue where, where, is it Shabbos? They have to, so then, for them, you have to do it. But for the Kahnam, you don't have to, if it's not a riot, it could be this Bryce is even like Rabbi Shmuel. That's what I told them, he said. Now, however, this Sigmar asks, Amali Mark Shish read of Chizl Rabash. He says, Mia Mina Khan, you saying do we say this concept that Kahanam are 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 particular, are 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 very careful, and if we don't have to make simonim for them, like blowing the shaifa? But that now we learn the Mishnah Mishnah the Sukkah that talks about the blast, the, the shaifa blast they would do in the base of Migdash. They wouldn't do less than twenty one every single day. <coughs> now it says on Arab Shabbos, they would do even more. <coughs> Why? Why would they do more? Because they would do Sholish Lahaftal Sa'am Malacha. Three shoifah blasts before Shabbos would be to stop people from doing forbidden work. Shalish lahab ben kodesh lachal, and three would be to separate between the holy and the mundane. Now, the Gemara assumes now at this point, from the fact that they would blow these shoifah blasts in the Beis HaMikdash, who are they doing it for? For the Kahanim to recognize that now we're going into Shabbos. So you see that we do need a hacker even for Kahanim, even though there's reason. So we're back to the question. How could you say that previous Bryce was like, even like it be small, because, okay, yes, there's a difference between Shabbos and the Kippurim, and Shabbos, you could sacrifice its fast and Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur can't do on Shabbos, but you don't have to do a sign because Kahanam is reason. And here you see that you do have to do signs for the Kahanam. So Zikman, no. Kedama Abaya. That blast is like Abaya says in the Sech Desum, in the third parak, where it talks about the certain candelabrum that Helni Hamalka made by the entryway of the Hegel. When the sun would shine, it would be such brilliant gold that sparks would come out of the gold. And everyone knew that it's time to say Kriyishma because obviously the sun has, has risen. Now, the Gemara, however, asks on that, it says, wait a second, there's a Mishnah that has, says, whoever reads Krishna recites Krishna with the Kahanim, when they say it has not fulfilled this obligation, because they would say it way earlier, way later, it wasn't at the time, they were busy with that Vaida, so obviously, that they don't say it when the sun is coming out. So what are you saying, that the, the candelabra would tell people when to say Krishna? the Kahanim are not saying Krishna at this month of Krishna when the sun is coming up. So that Abaya says, he says, you're right, that sign of the candelabrum was L'Shar Amad de Yerushalayim. It was for the other people in Yerushalayim that they would see the glow because the Harabayas is there in Yerushalayim to know when to say Krishna when it's appropriate time when the sun has already come up. You're not supposed to say it before the sun has risen. Ah, says Yimah Hachanami, here also, this that was saying that they would blow the Shefer Blast in the base of Migdash wasn't for the Kahnam themselves. It was L'Shar Amad de Yerushalayim, it was for the other people in Yerushalayim. They need a sign. But Kahnam, since there's reason, they don't need a sign. And therefore, it's still a good approach that we said that the previous place could be like Bishmol, even though he holds the difference between Halacha, Bim Kippur, and Shabbos, because that's only for the Kahnam to know. I can't, don't need any signs. But now the Gemara asks him another question. The Gemara says, okay, the Gemara asks both according to Bikiva and according to Bishmol, when Yom Kippur falls on Arab Shabbos, the Litka, no, you should blow the Shaifa Blas. I mean, we just quoted the Bryce before that says, Yom Kippur is on Friday, you're not going to blow the shayfer before Shabbos. Because you don't need a sign. Yom Kippur, you can't do Malacha Shabbos, you can't do what's the point of blowing the shayfer? Amit Yom Tim, no Malacha. What, of course, we're, we're in the middle of Yom Tim over here. So Yom Kippur is on Friday, to have Shabbos, to go, you don't blow the shayfer. Now they can ask whether that's Bryce is only according to Bikiva or even according to Bishmol, but according to both of them, you should blow the shayfer. Why should you blow the shayfer? Kehecha delivery, so that people should know the shari bikanibas yarek, that you're allowed to trim the vegetable. 
min hamincha ulamala from the afternoon onwards. Meaning, people should know that Yom Kippur is lesser in at least one area of halacha than Shabbos, because in Yom Kippur, as our Gemara is going to shortly discuss, you're allowed to trim the vegetables that's detached, which is the way Rashi explains it, is taking off the leaves from the stem to make it uh, you know, even sized, where it should be prepared to cut and dice, which the Gemara later on tells us is permitted. Why is it permitted? Because it's inui, it's affliction, where you see, you're preparing food, you can't eat it. When Kippur, of anything you see, you see a bag of pretzels that little kid left over, you say, oh, if only I could have that pretzels, right? So, so it's a little bit of an inu, it's affliction. So therefore, actually, they permit you to go ahead and prepare the food in the afternoon of Yom Kippur. Now, on that, the Gemara is asking, you should blow the shayf on Arab Shabbos. Why are you blowing the shayf? So that you should know that Yom Kippur that you had now on Friday was lesser. And we're going to know that because we're blowing the shayf. Obviously, I mean, so we're going in more severe. What, what's more severe? Ah, you're allowed to do something in Kippur. What are you allowed to do? Kniva's Yerik. So blow the shayf that people should know that halach. Says Amar He says, no, we don't override a rabbinic prohibition, which is what this Kniva's Yerik is, of, of cutting off the leaves, to permit something. Meaning blowing your shayf is rabbinically forbidden. Now, you're telling me that you should override that rabbinic isra of blowing your shayfer so that people should know that you're allowed to go ahead and, 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 and trim the vegetables. No, you're not going to override this rabbinic isra of blowing the shayfer to permit something, only to make things forbidden. Like, for example, if, yep, if Yom Tiv is on Arab Shabbos, then we'll blow the shayfer to stop people from doing Eichel Nefesh Malachim. No, you can't cook anymore, you can't do this, this anymore. To, to make things forbidden as a stringency, then we'll override rabbinic isra. But not to make a head of to say, oh, what you could do, that's we're not going to be leaning on the Isra on it. That's one approach. For Rav Sheh of Idioma, he says that actually, no, you could even override a rabbinic Isra for a permissibility, to make a hetter. But that's only if what you were permitting would be for now. But the way you're asking the question is, you're talking about Yom Kippur's on Arab Shabbos. You don't need that halacha of trimming the vegetable right now, because on Shabbos, you're not going to cook it anyway. So this whole blowing of the shaykh is only to tell us a permissibility on a different year, when Yom Kippur falls out on a Tuesday, middle of the week, that you want me to blow the shayfer on Yom Kippur on Friday, so that people will know if I'm blowing the shayfer, it must mean Yom Kippur has some type of a leniency, which is trimming the vegetables, which is not negative this year, because you're not trimming it out, because you're not going to cook on Shabbos anyway. So it's only for another year? Ah, says the Gemara, Shvus Kareva, a, a, a rabbinic uh, re- prohibition, that's for a permissibility of something that's immediate, that hit you, that they would permit. Shvus Rechika, but to override a rabbinic iser for some type of thing that you'll have for a distant time, that layatiru, they didn't permit for something that's a distant time, and therefore that's why they're not going to have you blow the shayfer on the kippur that falls out on the Arab Shabbos. However, on this answer, the Gemara rejects and says, is that really so that a close heter will override a rabbinic iser? But with not learning the mission of the school necessarily this. Yom Tev Shechali is Arab Shabbos. If Yom Tev falls out to be an Arab Shabbos, which I think we have, maybe was it is this year? having either Shabbos Sunday, Friday Shabbos. But if Yom Tov falls out on Friday, so then the halach is like this. So taken, you blow the shayfer to stop people from doing work that's permitted to be done on Yom Tov, like Rechel Nefesh, where people are cooking and making food. So you go ahead and you make the, the you blow the shayfer to separate people from the holier day of the more mundane day. Now, V'loy Mavdil, but you don't make Abdullah by davening and on the cup. We are, although let's say usually Matzah Yom Tov, Mizuk Atu Chayin Adon, you say at the end of Yom Tov also Havdalah, but this Matzah Yom Tov you're not going to be saying Havdalah, because Havdalah was only instituted when you're leaving a holy day and going into a lesser holy, a more mundane day, but not when you're leaving uh, the, the the lesser day and going into the holier day, because actually as Rashi explained, did to the contrary, the Kiddush of Friday night on the wine is actually the recognition that you're leaving Yom Tov into Shabbos. Usually you make Abdullah to say, okay, we're, we're making a separation. But you don't have to. Separation is when you're going from a holier day to a less day. Here you're going from a lesser holy day to the more holier day. Now, says the Gibraisa further, says the Mishnah further, let's say Yom Tov falls out to be Matzah Shabbos. Uh, it's Shabbos Sunday. So then, Mavdil, you can make Abdullah in davening and in a cup of wine. You can say, Mavdil ben Kaidish, le Kaidish, because you're leaving a more severe sanctified day to a lesser one. So that's Abdullah. But, Beloit Taikin. You're not going to blow the shayfer on Shabbos afternoon to stop the people from doing work because of anything the day that you're leaving, which is Shabbos, is more severe and you didn't do work anyway. So no point in making uh, the tkiyas to stop or having Yom Tov coming in anyway you didn't do work, which was from Shabbos. However, ask the Gemara like this. 
But Vamai, if you're going to think to say that you override a rabbinic iser to permit something that's a heter, that's immediate, so then Litka, you should blow the shaifer when it gets dark. Even if Yom Tov falls out to be a Matzah Shabbos, you tell me you don't blow the shaifer because what are you blowing the shaifer? It was Shabbos just now. We didn't do Malach. If anything was more severe, you don't have to stop you from doing work. You weren't doing work anyway. And that's what they want to know. You should blow the shaifer. Please discuss exactly what is the blowing the shaifer come to tell us. But you should blow the shaifer to let you know that it's night, that you're allowed to do something. You're blowing the shaifer. Why blowing the shaifer? Because it's Yom Tov now. You could slaughter the animals right now. If you were telling me you do a malacha, or you override a shmus, which is blowing the shaper, for a hat to which is immediate, you said, no, shmus karayv, when Kippur falls on Erev Shabbos, we're not going to blow the shaper to tell you that you could do Kniva's Yerev, but you can't do this year anyway. It's for a different year. That we won't do. But if it was immediate, you would. Then why wouldn't you let blowing on, on Yom Tov that falls on Matzah Shabbos to say that you could start doing malacha by Nefesh? It says, you're right, Allah Machvad, right, that's clear, because Rabbi Yisrael, we have to tell Rabbi Yisrael, like the first interpretation, which was, you're right, we're not overriding a Shavuz for a Hatter, you can't say the second approach, that Shavuz Karei Be'etiru, so the Shavuz Ruchet Allah Hitiru, because we see we don't allow blowing the Shavu when Yom Tov falls on Sunday, even though it has immediate relevance to teach that you can shaft on Yom Tov, we don't let that, because we don't override a rabbinic Yisrael for Hatter, therefore that's why we said that we don't blow the Shavu when Yom Kippur falls out to be on Arab Shabbos. Now, parenthetically, the Gemara brings. Amr Bzeiru, Amr Avuna, Ramla, some say Amr Babu, Amr Avuna. The Gemara concludes with this machlekes regarding the case that we brought up regarding, we have, again, Talmudic style. We had a question to say that this machlekes is Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva. We brought in a brisa that we thought would be both according to Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva and Bavel. We thought we'd be going like both of them. He came to Eretz Yisrael, they told him, no, it's only like Rabbi Akiva, not like Rabbi Shmuel, but according to Rabbi Shmuel, then you should go ahead and do the tkiyas. And that he says, no, because kind of reason hain. So then we had a question on that. We said that, wait a second, according to both of them, you should do a tkiyah, because it should let us know the head of Kenevis Yerik. So we end off the daf having this, a discussion of this machlekes of Kenevis Yerik. Says the Gemara, a machlekes regarding whether Kenevis Yerik may be done on Kippur that falls out on Shabbos. So that says the Gemara, from Rav Huna, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbos. Also, the Kenevis Yerik, you now go ahead and do this trimming of the vegetable, meaning, uh, as Rashi explained, obviously your regular Shabbos, you now to trim the vegetable because that's rabbinically forbidden, because you're not doing a uh, tircha on Shabbos for a weekday. But rather, even today, where when you would do it on Yom Kippur, the folds it on Shabbos, it would be an Inui, which, like we're saying, that other Yom Kippurim were regular rabbinic isters are forbidden, this rabbinic ister is permitted, because it's some type of an Inui, so the Rabbana didn't make it Aser, but now that it falls out on Shabbos, the Rabbana did not permit you to go ahead and do the trimming of the vegetable if it falls out to be on Shabbos. Amarav, Mana, he says, Tana, it's a, it's a b'risa. The b'risa says the same thing. How do we see this? The b'risa is benignly in the Kippur Meshachal Yisrael Shabbos. How do you know if Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbos? Sha'asu b'kinevis Yerik did not trim the vegetable. Because Tama Leib, the Pasuk teaches, the Pasuk in Shemais, that refers to Shabbos Bereshis, meaning many things are called Shabbosan. Yom Kippur is called Shabbosan, Yom Tov is called Shabbos. But this is referring to the Shabbos that we know, what we call Shabbos. It says, Tamalim, it says Shabbosin. Now, the word Shabbosin is refers to Shabbos Kodesh, but what's the word Shabbosin? It sounds like the word Shabbos. Shabbos means to rest. So on that says the Gemara, Lamai, for which trimming of the vegetable is the Pasuk coming to tell us that you can't do on Shabbos? Elim, the Malacha, if you think it's, you know, trimming a vegetable that's attached to the ground, which is a Malacha, it's one of the Malachas of Tanglish, of Kaitz. Ah, well, you wouldn't need this pasuk to tell you that of Shabbosin. For example, it's a pasuk in Shemais. It says, Lay sasik a malacha. You're not supposed to do any malacha. Why would you need another pasuk to tell you that you can't do the malacha of Kaitzer? <laughs> now, Allah, rather, isn't it coming to tell you, Akinibas Yerik, regarding the trimming of the vegetable that's in general, that's detached. That's not a malacha. That the pasuk of Shabbosin is telling you that you're overriding a positive commandment of Shavuos. Ah, so since biblically it's forbidden all Shabbosins of the year, here we're not going to permit you because of Agmas Nefesh, of its affliction, to override a biblical prohibition. Whereas other Yom Kippurim, it's permitted because of Agmas Nefesh. As Rashi says, wait a second, Yom Kippurim also says Shabbosin, which says Shabbos, that you can't do Malacha. And that's the Rashi, no. But Yom Kippurim, that's not actually referring to Malacha. It's actually only from something that stops you from affliction, which it's near the Pasuk of Ve'nisim. As the Gemara says this in the last parak in Yuman, the Fine Dalman Av, it's talking about that you shouldn't be bathing, you shouldn't be anointing, and things that are similar to that. So therefore, here we're talking about now, Tesis says that it's Nesmach to be Alma. 
because it would be biblical, then it would be forbidden on Yom Kippur. But it's an asmachta, so therefore that's what we're saying that, obviously, that this halacha is talking about a regular Kenevis Yerek, Shema Mino, we're telling you that that trimming of the vegetable cannot be done on Shabbos that falls in Yom Kippur, but it, it, even though it can be done on Yom Kippur. However, the Gemara brings the Machlekes. Amr B'chibar Abba Amr B'yechem, he says, no. Yom Kippur M'shachalis B'Shabbos, Yom Kippur falls in Shabbos, Mutu B'Kenevis Yerek. You're allowed to do the trimming of the vegetable on Shabbos. Says the Gemara Meisvei, the Gemara from the Brayshim we just put before, which supports the other interpretation. Minami Yom Kippur M'shachalis B'Shabbos, having the Yom Kippur falls on Shabbos, Shabbos B'Kenevis Yerek, you now do the trimming of the vegetable. Tamal Leim Shabbos, and says Shabbos, which Shabbos means to stop. Says the Gemara Lamai, what's that? What, what is what, what's it talking about? Elam Al Malacha, if you think it's talking about the attached Yerek that you're trimming, Vokseb it says in the Pesach Lasazik Kam Malacha, obviously Elab B'Kenevis Yerek. Rather, obviously it's talking about the trimming of the vegetable that that's forbidden to be done. On, on, on Shabbos, which is only, uh, again, like we said, it's, it's not a, the, the regular malacha, it's even if it's detached, that we see that is forbidden to be done on Shabbos, and you keep the falls on Shabbos. So the Gemara no, Lailam la malacha, truthfully talking about the malacha of Taylish, which, as, as Taysh explains, that uh, when the Bryce is talking about the trimming of the vegetable, it means that you're doing it very thin, which is a biblical issue, either because it's very similar to Taychin, Grinding, which you're not allowed to cut things very, very thin, or it's actually talking about where it's attached. But we read that as a it's doing the malacha <coughs> rice. But regular kaniva serik actually would be permitted if it's attached just to trim the vegetables, which is only a shavuz, that would be permitted. So, what I mean, but uh, we said it already has a pasig that you can't do malacha. Why do you need a special pasig regarding this? To tell you that, yes, if you do kaitzer, then you're going to violate not just a negative prohibition of the you're also going to be violating a positive commandment. That's what Shabbos is coming to teach us. Says the Gemara Tanya Kabbas said Rabbi Yechon the Bryce that says like Rabbi Yechon that you're actually allowed to do the Knibus Yerik on Yom Tov. Again, it's their machlek is how do you interpret this Bryce? Is the Bryce talking about uh, the Malacha Knibus Yerik that you can't do in Shabbos Avos Yom Tov, but the regular trimming of a of a, of a of a detached vegetable you could do, or is it no? It's even talking about that you can't do the a detached Knibus Yerik, which there's a discussion. The Rishon makes exactly what that problem is. Rashi makes it sound like it's the race, so later on not. But the point is that you can't even do that on Shabbos of Ozen Yom. That's the Machlech, is how you interpret it. Is he talking about, on a, let's say, an attached Knibis Yerik, that you can't do Malacha, or is he talking about even that of, uh, of that which is detached, and that's what we're saying would be the problem. And we have a Bryce that's put your and it says that it's mutter to do it when it's detached, and you're just trimming the vegetable, uh, which you're allowed to do in Eretz Yom Kippur, but he's saying you can even do it on, on Yom Kippur that falls in on Shabbos. The Bryce has said, Yom Kippur Meshachal is B'Shabbos, Yom Kippur falls on Shabbos, and Kippur Tav of Chavtez Vav Meral, says clearly, Mutzah B'Kini you're allowed to go ahead and trim the vegetable on Shabbos. Now, some take out the parentheses, but it says, Yom Kippur Meshachal is B'Shabbos, if Yom Kippur falls during the weekday, the Bible that is made says that what you're allowed to do on Yom Kippur is Mephatzim by Glazim, you're allowed to crack the nuts, Mephatzim and Brimayim, you're allowed to go ahead and break open the pomegranates, and the reason why you could do these things is because they're rabbinic prohibitions. They're not biblically uh, forbidden. The only rabbinic. And here, because, like we said, it's agmas nefesh. It's 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 painful. Where you you're you're preparing food and you can't eat it. So that's close to like inoy, which is supposed to be nisim as not to make it So therefore, the rabbanan permitted it. Again, they wouldn't permit a malacha by rice over that. But rabbinically forbidden things like kanibus yerek, like we like we speak rabbanan it is permitted. But however, well, this is from Yom Kippurim, right? This is preparing for Yom Kippurim, exactly. So that's, the Mechim Shabbos is only the Rabbanah? Yeah, Hachana is the Rabbanah, it's not one of the uh, So, So we're saying over here that, um, that this, that you're allowed to do this thing, is only specifically Min Amincha Lamabal. It's from the afternoon and later on, which then already you're anticipating and you're, you're desperately thinking about food and dreaming about something you're going to be eating on Matzah Yom Kippurim, then it's weird, that, that because there's mipnei, there's uh, agmas nefesh, there's a real uh, pain of, of, of not eating, only from that point on is permitted. But earlier in the day, now I go ahead and do this uh, uh, kenibas erik and all these other things like that. Now, the Gemara actually brings stories that the Bey Rabbi Yehuda, by the household of Rabbi Yehuda, Mekam Vikarva, that they actually would go ahead and they would um, trim the cabbage. The Bey Rabbi and Rabbi's household, they would be guard the curry, they would scrape the pumpkins. Now the problem is, Kivun the Chazab, once he saw, when Rabbi saw the Abba that he was starting to do this earlier in the day before Mincha time, where it's not so much Agmas Nefesh, which is not permitted, so Amalahu, so he said to his household members, he says, Ah, oh, Asi, Garti, Mimai, Rava, 
there was a letter that came from the West from Eretz Yisrael, Meshmed Rabbi Yechon, Neh Rabbi And what Rashi says, he only said it so that they should accept him. He says, oh, Chaim Kanievsky said, right? So he said that, like, you know, something that they should listen, said to us so that, you know, I'll do this anymore because he saw that they're doing it too early, which is not the hefe, the whole hefe is the Agmas Nefesh, and therefore that was there to stop them from doing it too early. Hanelach Melech Shomer shall return to the fifteen parents of Shabbos, Frank Melech Shomer, which primarily spoke about this idea about Kishar and about Nats and other Melachas uh, on Shabbos. Some of just we spoke about today's Daf and Shabbos Daf Kuf Yudalid was uh, we spoke about the continuation of the theme of the previous Daf, which we spoke about. You want to change your clothing when you're coming at the Shabbos. Um, how do we know that source from the Tyra? Which that we said because by the claim when he would take out the ashes, he would change his clothing. As we said, the clothing that you use to make, to, to, to cook the pot, if you're wearing the, 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 the apron, you don't wear that when you're coming to serve the cup to the master. That's the same thing that when you're going into Shabbos, the same thing by the count, by the avoid in the base of Mikdash. We also said that it's disgraceful of Tamachachim to have shoes that have patches on top of patches. We said that if he has a stain of grease on his garments, he's chayv misa. We, uh, we actually explained that's on the outer garment that he wears. And that's Masanai Ahavim Abbas that they caused people to hate the Mikdashachachachim. If he has rivad, similar, but it just has a dalad. If he has rivad, which is a, 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 a semen stain, that's a problem only if it's on the lower garment, where people don't see that, but he shouldn't have that either. Then we spoke about, which came into the relation of tamachacham, his makban on his garments, like we said, he shouldn't have any dirty stains. So we said that, we brought a, a mishnei text that if he has, if there's a stain of grease on a saddle cloth, so he said that's a chatzitza. Shemlil says specifically if it's the size of a iser italki, a certain size of a coin. Now, if it's on a garment, what's considered a stain that you're particular about that chatzi? So we have three remachlekes. Mm-hmm. We have the tamakama. He said it's only if it's on both sides, this can be chatzitza. We had Rabbi Huda's version of Rabbi Shmal, that he said that even on one side of chatzitza. Then we had Rabbi Yesi's version of Rabbi Shmal, that he said that depends. Of the banoyin, then it's a chatzitza even on one side. If it's a garment of Amor, it's, 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 it's a power, you know, so then it's, then it's uh, only if it's on both sides. Now, the Gemara said that for sure Mardas, a saddle cloth, is not going to be better than the garments of Amorit, that's also going to be Chatzit only if it's on both sides. Now, who's the Banoyim? So that's where we had, why, that's why we brought in, because one interpretation is it's Tamid Chacham. And that's why, why are they called Banoyim? Because they're basically Binyan Shalom, they're building up the world. Now, once we got into that discussion, so we qualified what's a Tamid Chacham for many different halachas, like that you return the Zaveda with just Tfiyas Ayin that you can appoint him as a leader over the public, <coughs> that you have to do his work, different qualifications, what's considered tamachacham for those areas halacham. And a second interpretation of who the banalin are, we actually said by the, by the spa, they give you special robes, that's where they're very particular about how they look, so that actually depends. Where on the outer ones, those were actually red. So that actually, you're not so particular about a stain. And that's the one that he said he should be buried in, not white, not black. But, but on the lower garments, one that they would wear on their skin, that fine Egyptian cotton, they come there, that, had, that was white, that were particular about even the stain on one side would be chatzitza, because that they don't want to have any stains for those VIP people, they want to have those returning customers, that's what we said is the second interpretation, banoi, and that's chatzitza, even on one side. Then we had, explaining the, the machlekes in our Mishnah, between Rabbi Shmol and Rabbi Kiva, which they had a machlekes regarding if the Chelvi Shabbos could be sacrificed on Yom Kippur. Where is that based on? It's based on how you interpret the positive of Oil Shabbos B'Shabbat. So it says the word Shabbos two times. That's coming to include. And then it also has a Vav, which is coming to exclude. It's Shabbos. So that really depends, we said, if you hold the Nedarim and are, be, are able to be brought on Yom Tov. If you hold the Nedarim and just Nedav is donated, you don't have to bring it today, you can bring it any day, are allowed to be brought on Yom Tov. So then, if you're including a Rebbe, you're saying the word Shabbos a second time, that obviously you're going to be including Yom Kippur, not Yom Tim, because Yom Tim you can bring the Dharm and the Davis. Of course, you can bring the Chel Shabbos, which you have to bring the day before, and now it's coming, but say Yom Tim is Yom Tim, so it must be including Yom Kippur. But if you hold it, you cannot bring the Dharm and the Davis on Yom Tim, so then Shabbos, the second time he's saying, is coming to include Yom Tim. That's Machlech, is Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Kiva, based on the interpretation of that Pasik, or the Shabbos, the Shabbat, it's based on their Machlech, if you can bring the Dharm and the Davis on Yom Tim or not. Then we said this that we learned in the Brysum that Yom Kippurim that falls out on Arab Shabbos, they wouldn't blow the shayfer. <coughs> so there was a discussion in the Gemara that you could say that that's specifically only according to Rebbe Kiva. That's what they wanted to say in Marava in Eretz Yisrael. Why is it only like Rebbe Kiva? 
if it's going to be Shmuel, you should blow the shayfer. Why should you blow the shayfer? That you should know that the Chalbi Shabbos could be brought in Yom Kippur. So when Yom Kippur is on Friday, going into Shabbos, blow the shayfer to show people that we're upgrading in the sanctity, that you know that, let's say, if it's the other way around, when, let's say, Yom Kippur falls in on Sunday, that then you could bring those fats in Yom Kippur because it's, 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 it's a lower level. But according to Yom Kippur, it's the same, so we understand why you want to blow. But according to Shmuel, you should blow it to let that be known. And then he responded, he says, no, I can tell you the price even like Rabbi Shmuel. Because Kahanim are the ones that we're talking about over here. There's reason, man. They don't need a tekiah to be as a simon. I, the Gemara, added a question that says, wait a second. But we learned the Mishnah that they would blow three blasts in the base of Mikdash to stop people from doing malacha. Says the Gemara, no, that's Lashar Amad Yerushalayim. Just like we had by the candelabrum for this man of Krishna. That wasn't for the Kahanim, that was for other people. And therefore, that's not a Raya. And it could be that the Bryce even like a Bishmal. We also said that we're not going to blow the shayfer, which was a question we had asked both on Shmuel and Rebekiva, that they should know that you're allowed to go ahead and do Kaniba Ziarek, now which the Gemara ultimately pointed out that was only from Mincha and onward. Maybe that's why you're allowed to blow the shayfer on your Kippur that falls on Arab Shabbos, that you should know that for a regular year you could do Kaniba Ziarek on your Kippurim, because if you're blowing the shayfer, you're obviously saying there's something more lenient by the Kippur than Shabbos. So the Gemara gave two approaches. No, first of all, you're not going to override a Shvas to, to make a Heter. You're not going to blow a shayfer, which is a Shvas to Rabbanan, which is to tell you that you're allowed to do something permitted. The second approach says, no, you actually could, but it's only Shvus Kareva, Shvus Ruchaika, which this is not for this year, it's for a different year, that didn't permit. The Gemara only rejected that because you see that you don't blow the Shafer when Yom, Yom, Yom Tiv is on Matzah Shabbos, you're not going to blow the Shafer to let you know that you could start Shechting, so therefore the Gemara rejected that and any Shvus would not matter for any Hetem. I mean, then we had that we finished with a Machlekes. If Kanivis Yerik, which is permitted on Yom Kippur, is even if it falls out on Shabbos. <coughs> so that really depends. When it says in the Brace, Shabbos sign, what does that come to tell us? Is that talking about the Kanivis Yerik of a Malacha, which is actually, let's say, by Tailish, that as Taisa explains, or that of cutting it fine, which is Taichin, let's say? Oh, so then why do you need Shabbos? And we already know you can't do any Malacha. That's coming to tell you, besides the Loisa say, the Loisa Malacha, that there's also not say, but regular Kanivis Yerik that is just detached, that that actually you could do on Shabbos. Or is it talking about, no, even the Kenevis Yerek, that even that we're telling you forbidden to be done on Shabbos. That's what Shabbos is coming to include. Even if it's detached, you cannot do that on Shabbos. And if, although Yom Kippur could do it, you wouldn't be able to do it on Shabbos. Look how beautiful this was. Hadun Allah. Look, it's, 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 he knows the time. He says, he sees me like a shaman, which I'm going to turn to back and start making time. Hosting us.